This show is dedicated to helping you strengthen your family tree and live financially free. Welcome to the Marriage, Kids, and Money podcast, everybody. This is session number 99, and my name's Andy Hill, and today we're chatting about net worth. Yes, the barometer for your financial health, your financial strength, and your financial future. Through the many financial conversations (laughs) I've had, and even in my own personal experience, a lot of people actually don't know what net worth is. And today, we're going to change all that. I've invited a, a man who's been tracking his net worth every month for the last 10 years. That is, well, let's see, what, 12 times, yeah, that's uh, that's 120 net worth charts. That's crazy. <laughs> that's dedication. And that mystery man is, uh, he goes by Jay Money. He's a very popular blogger from the Budgets Are Sexy blog. Jay's money knowledge has been featured in countless publications, including CBS News, U.S. News and World Report, and Forbes. He has received over a dozen awards for his writing, advice, and his community building. He's also a married man and a father of three awesome kids. Welcome to the show, Jay Money. Hello, thank you, sir. I like I like that intro. I'm gonna take you with me wherever I go. <laughs> it's like uh, you know, it's like when you're running, you got like the guy next to you with the boombox being like, "This is yes. your these are your theme songs." <laughs> that would be really nice. That would be cool. I don't don't run. Maybe that's what I need to to get <laughs> <laughs> to get running, right? So what what got you interested in doing your uh, very first net worth chart back in the day? Oh man, yeah, ten years ago I bought a house at the peak of the market. You know, no money down, no no skills, nothing. I just uh, it was one of those things that everyone's like, oh, you got to get married, you got to buy a house, you got to have kids, all this stuff. Um, and so I said, oh, a house. Anyways, long story short, I bought a house on a whim. Um, started Googling, Hey, how do you budget? How do you manage money? And I came across blogs, which I didn't know what they were at the time. Um, and I saw a blog called my money blog by Jonathan, uh, mymoneyblog.com, which is still going on right now. Um, and he shared his net worth, like the savings, debts, investments, everything. And I'd never seen someone's real life money. Um, and that fascinated me. I just, I couldn't, I resonated well. I kept reading, I kept reading more blogs and eventually decided to start my own but but seeing him showcase it for the first time in my life was so shocking that I'm like I'm gonna try this and see what happens and you know here we are ten years later. That's great. So what about Jonathan's blog was like? Hey, I want to do that too. Did you like his openness, his honesty? Yeah, I liked the openness. Um, it was really easy to read. Um, it was kind of fun. Um, after a while, it was like the same kind of stuff that you you know personal finance. Like what do you ever you'd expect to read from a financial site? Yeah. Um, and I started going to others, and then I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna just come out here talk about drinking, talk like I just wanted to be more like more regular, I guess. Yeah. Uh, because finance isn't in my background. It's nothing I studied for. You know, I was just a regular person. You know, in my twenties, going out to bars and stuff. Um, so I thought, well, I'm going to have fun and I'm going to curse and I'm going to be crazy. Um, and just totally for passion, like no idea you can make money online. No idea would change, you know, my, my finances and my life for the better. Um, but yeah, just one of those things I just said, let me try it. And longest thing I've ever done in my life, really. So it was the, the no money down house that kind of said, oh man, I gotta, I gotta figure this stuff out. And then you got, then you did some investigation. So why did you decide net worth tracking was the way to start to improve? Why was that important for you? Um, probably at first because Jonathan and since I liked him and I liked, um, I don't know, it just seemed like he knew what he was doing. And I was like, oh, well, let me sit down and track mine. And I'd never tracked, you know, stuff like that before. Um, so seeing, you know, you know, you set it up and then once a month, it takes five minutes, you know, log into your accounts, copy, paste numbers and put it in. But it gives you something like a physical number you know, like $10,000 or whatever. It's like, it gives you something so you know, like overall, this is how I stand. Here's a snapshot of my whole financial picture. Um, That was really telling for me. And then every month seeing it go up or down is also telling sometimes for the better, sometimes for the worse, right? (laughs) And sometimes it's out of your control and most times it is in within your control. Um, So having something to track every month was super important for me to hold myself accountable at least. That's cool. So what what was the first number you threw out there in, I think this was 2008, that said, hey, here's my starting net worth? Yeah, I think it was around $50,000. And I think I even tracked net worth a little differently there. Like I didn't, again, like I didn't know what I was doing. I was just looking at what other people are doing, trying to figure it out, which, you know, it's a lot of us in life. 
Um, yeah, but and I think a bulk of that was 401k money and then a whole bunch of equity in my house, which I thought was equity, which later turned out not to be so much <laughs> equity. <laughs> you know, so probably it was more around ten thousand dollars realistically. Um, but yeah, fifty thousand was the first number that I started tracking. So, so people are hearing us say this word over and over, or this uh, couple of words, net worth, over and over and over again. Could you could you explain what net worth is, just so we're on par with everybody as we're going through the show? Yeah, yeah. And basically, it's just a snapshot of your money. So everything that you, you know, all your assets on one side, all your liabilities. So, you know, if you have cash, um, investments, that goes on one side. You have debts, you know, credit cards, student loan, that's another side. And in a very simplistic nutshell, your assets minus your liabilities, you know, everything you own minus what you owe equals a number. And that number is your net worth. You know, how you track it, what goes in there. That's all, you know, stuff for you to decide and to, to figure out what makes you comfortable. Um, but in a general, that that's your net worth number. Okay, cool. So back back when you started off, were you saying, hey, I want to get to this number? Or were you just saying, hey, I want to track something just so I know what I'm doing? No, I wanted a million dollars. There like you that, go. <laughs> when you're, I think, you know, it's funny because now a million dollars, like it's, I like it. It's fun to think about, but it's like way at the bottom of the priority list. But when you're first paying attention to money, like a million dollars is a million dollars, right? And of course, like it's, it's super exciting. It's a goal. Um, so that was, that's what I want. I was like, all right, I'm going to start tracking all the way up until I hit a million, which I'm still not at. Um, but I'm getting closer, you know, as the months and the years progress. Um, but that's what excited me at the time. Now it's more financial freedom and, you know, daily lifestyle versus the money. Um, but yeah, but a million dollars was, was what I was shooting for. And a lot of people, I think, especially at the younger you are, the more exciting it seems to be. Yeah. So you, you started at 50,000 and where are you today? It's uh, 10 years later. Yeah. So right now I'm about 840,000. Oh so man, slowly, that's awesome. Yeah. So it's creeping to that million. <laughs> yeah. It's getting there, you know, and it has its ups and downs, of course. Um, and, you know, the stock market the last 10 years obviously has been doing great. So, you know, it's not all me being awesome. You know, it's, it's other stuff, but, but yeah, we're, we're getting closer. Well, that's cool. Let's, let's help people figure out how to grow theirs like you have. I mean, that's, that's a big swing. That's a $800,000 in 10 years. That's, that's incredible. So let's, let's talk about the things that you did to help increase it from 50,000 to 850,000, uh, over that time. So you talked about a couple different things, you know, you said assets, you said liabilities, you know, a lot of people struggle with debt and that's where the liabilities come in. Right. So right, I was, right. I was peeking at, I was doing a little, uh, going into your website and looking at all your, your past. Cause I mean, no joke guys, he literally tracked every month for the past 10 years and he's got it all on his site. So talk about if you want to, you want to peek into somebody's lives like he did with Jonathan originally, um, and, yeah. uh, getting an understanding. So we, we appreciate the, the openness, but one thing I saw, in 08, right when you started, you had an auto loan, you had a car, and okay, then all yep. of a sudden it completely disappeared from your, your chart. What, what happened? Yeah, where, I going? sold that bad boy. Yeah, yeah. I had an SUV, chrome rims, you know, I was like, oh, I'm the man. And um, actually, on a whim one day, I saw an old beat up Cadillac, you know, for like $3,000 on the side of the road. I was like, oh man, like that Cadillac would give me just as much like excitement as this SUV. You know, it's a, you know, a tenth cheaper um, and then, you know, probably over about the course of two weeks, I decided to sell my, my, um, Highlander at the time, my SUV, I think I had like 20,000 left on it owed. Um, and I just bought this credit card, I actually put the credit or put the, the car on my credit card and paid it off within a month. Um, but yeah, it was $3,000 and I, I got rid of my debt. I got a car that did the same thing for me in terms of enjoyment. Um, you know, a little bit older and more mileage, but, um, but yeah, that was, that was a nice and easy thing. And, and really that's what I've learned over the 10 years. There's a lot of stuff that excites us, right? Some stuff costs a lot of money. Something is free, like going on a walk, right? Like if you give me a hundred dollars of cash or go like say, Hey, let's go to the movies or let's go out to dinner or go on a walk. They're both like all that stuff is equal excitement for me. Right. And so sometimes you take the walk, sometimes you go and you spend the money. And so with the car, it's the same similar thing. Like if both things excite me, and one's going to get me close to the goals. Usually I go for the one that's going to get you close to the goals. That's cool. So you had, uh, you had the flashy SUV and then you said, Hey, you know what? Yeah. I, I want to, I want to keep moving forward in this, you know, this millionaire milestone. And that, mm -hmm. that was a big, that was a big decision for you. So wh right. when you were, when you were driving that car and you decided to go for the $3,000 one, what was going through your brain? Um, you know, was there any sort of struggle saying, ah, I really, really love this car. How, how can I get rid of it? No, not not that much struggle, but it was during the times when gas prices were like up to four or five dollars a oh, gallon. Yeah. 
And I remember everyone's like, it's going to go to 10. It's going to go to $20. <laughs> right. And of course it did, but like that obviously didn't help pouring more gas into it, you know, more money. Um, and SUVs took a lot, um, you know, but really it was just, it was really, I think because I was, it was right around the time when I started publicly tracking stuff. Right. And so when I knew, like, if I did this, a, I knew it would be like a good move to blog about, right. It'd be good for my finances. Um, and it's just a challenge. I want to see if I could do it. Right. I think that the car, it was a 93 Cadillac. Um, so it was like a 15 year difference. Right. And I was like, I want to see if I can go back to like the college days of not needing this fancy stuff. Right. And, and would my life improve? And it didn't, I loved it. And that car over the years, kept getting hit like people would hit it and then they'd give me checks you know like insurance would give me checks to, to pay for it but i wouldn't pay it off so i had this beat up car and it was literally i think it made like two thousand dollars over the course of me <laughs> owning it so it actually kind of was free more or less right but that was the thing too right like i think i don't care if someone hits my car versus if i get a scratch now i freak out and it's stressful so you had like a right? tiny so side a hustle of, of people just hitting your car then <laughs> that's it man yeah within a powder of like three months i think it made like 1500 bucks it was awesome <laughs> That's great. Mm -hmm. So you you so you got the three thousand dollars and you had the credit. That's where the credit card debt came from. Then so uh, at, at that point, so how did you pay off the three thousand dollars? What did you do to get rid of that? Uh, I just put my um, whatever payments I was paying on the car. So I think it was like five hundred a month or something. I would apply to it. I had money in savings, I believe, at the time. It was a while ago, so I can't remember all the way. Um, but pretty much, I just like wiped it off as fast as I could, so I didn't have any interest. Um, and then I just started building up my savings again. Um, you know, and, and, you know, really like most of us can make these switches in life, but it is like cars are kind of annoying, right? Cause you gotta, it's a big process to sell one and to buy one, yeah. but there's other things in life, you know, that's cheaper, you know, Netflix, all these subscriptions were subscribed to, right? Like, it, like as long as you want something bad enough, that's what I figured out too. If you want it bad enough, like you're more than likely, you know, going to hit that goal versus if you're like, oh, that would be nice, but it doesn't, it's not a big priority in your life. I like how you mentioned that. So once you put it out there and you say, I'm going to do this or I'm going to make change, then you feel personally responsible, not only to do it for yourself, but to all the people you, you said it to now saying, hey, I'm going to yeah, do right. this. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. No, blogging is great. Like even and there's a lot of people like try and make money off in order, but, but taking out all of the business stuff and just blogging for the sake of blogging, like what it was meant to be back in the day, like a diary of thoughts, right? Like that's all it is. Like that is, it changes your mindset. It changes your action and really tracking your net worth. When you know you're going to update it next month, you start changing the way you spend and think about money because you know, it's going to reflect, reflect, you know? And so you start doing more good things with your money and less bad things so that that number creeps up and it's more of an internal challenge to yourself. But then obviously adding thousands of people watching, you know, forces you to do smarter things as well. Excellent. Well, so at this point, then I think it was in my in my awesome research on your site here. In '09, you were now like consumer debt free, and then in six in 2016, you all of a sudden had I bought another car. You, well, oh, you did? <laughs> Is that what Alexis, happened? Alexis, yeah. <laughs> so, so what happened there? Yeah. So this is another thing, right? Like I had, I started having kids, right? So I was like a hustler for five or six years working nonstop, had kids. I was like, Oh, wait a minute. Like there's more to life than, than making money and, and working hard all the time. Right. Um, and long story short, I, I became in charge of the kids in transporting and no longer would my hoopty be safe <laughs> enough to do the trick, you know? Um, and so I was looking for cars and it was one of those things where I'd see like a minivan or like, a normal SUV or one that would fit three kids um, and or two kids at the time. And I knew that like going like a luxurious ride. So I went um, from the, the old Cadillac to a Lexus um, RX 300. Um, it, it was only like $2,000, let's say more to get the SUV or to get the Lexus. And so for me, again, going back to lifestyle, like that was worth me spending extra to have a more enjoyable ride every day. And it was safer and there's all that stuff too. Um, but, but you know, but that was neat. So you could tell like over the 10 years, like I kind of went back and forth from the hoopty to the fancier back and forth. Um, but again, lifestyle and, and priorities at the time. Well, that's the thing. Once you start cleaning up your finances, it's not all about deprivation, right? I mean, you're, 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 oh, you're yeah. in a good spot and you're feeling good. Right. Why not treat yourself and then you know, take care of your family in the same sense. Yeah. Right? Oh, and I, and I got, I don't know if I'm allowed to curse or not, but I got a lot of hell from writing that article. Like I had people like I've been following you for years. I'm unsubscribing. Oh, no. Like you just like you are horrible you've been lying to me over the years you know people get so like online right there people get crazy online you know and i'm talking about budgeting and money it's not even hardcore but but a lot of people got offended or thought like 
I was going against stuff, right? But it, but going back to your point, it is once you get your money on track, well, A, you're allowed to do whatever you want with your money, period, right? Yeah. But once you get it on track, you're able to make these decisions and people see that and they didn't see, you know, all the years of savings or all the years of, you know, you know, paying attention and minimalism. Um, and so they just see like, oh, you bought a fancy car and you're a financial blogger. Eh, like those don't go together. Like get out of here. Right. Like you suck. So. Oh, man. Well, and, and then in uh, in six in 2016, the the mortgage uh, went completely off your chart. Too. So where did that go? Oh, How, yeah. That well, I'm mortgage free. You know why? Because I sold the house too, man. There I'm a go. renter. <laughs> That's another thing that people like, like, wait, that doesn't make sense. How can you rent and be a financial person? You know, but again, like, so for me over the years, really figuring out what makes me happy, what I enjoy, like my perfect lifestyle, right? And my perfect lifestyle is freedom, yeah. you know, freedom, not having to worry about money, freedom from responsibilities, at least the annoying parts of responsibilities. Um, and so, you know, we owned a house and, and, and that was like the biggest financial mistake of my life, but it also got me into like paying attention in the blog and talking to you on the podcast, right? Like it all started because of the house. So not, not, not a bad thing, but, but that house, I was never meant to be a homeowner, at least at that time. Mm -hmm. You know, I did it because everyone else was doing it and saying that's what you should do. Right. Um, and so that's why I did it, you know? And so, um, but, but, but the, the, the stress that came with it, the maintenance, you know, everyone says, oh, like compare your rent and your mortgage, but it's not, but there's so much more that goes into it, you know? And you know, anyone that owns a house knows that it costs money. Right. Um, and so um, we sold the house and I became free. I even paid, I think, like thirteen or fourteen thousand dollars at closing to, to sell my own house. Right. Like it definitely wasn't an investment, um, you know, but I've been free for about two years now. It just feels so good. And, you know, we had a flood in, in our rental the other month and I just made a phone call and you know, that was that. It was, it was nice and easy, you know, and I found out it was like a fifteen thousand dollar cash fix, you know, but. Not my problem, right? I love it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. the majority of my summer, Jay, is uh, I spend outside pulling weeds or taking care of my <laughs> lawn, trying to figure out what new sort of weed is on my lawn that I have to go to Home Depot on and figure out how to get rid of. It, it, yeah, it's and then the thing break, whatever, something inside the house breaks. So you, you've, I think you've made the right, right decision for your family <laughs> and your life. Absolutely. So, so those are the liabilities. So we talked about a yeah. few things there, car, you know, the credit card, the, the home mortgage, things like that. Let's talk about the assets. Obviously that's a great way to boost your net worth. So yeah. how did uh, your 401k help you with boosting your net worth? How did you get started in your 401k and then how does that helped you over the years? Yeah. So the 401k is probably like the number one thing I've done. And and now that I'm self-employed, I don't have a 401k, but I have a SEP IRA. Um, and there's, you know, a little bit different rules. But anyways, the one thing I did starting from day one, when I'm like, you know what, I want to grow my net worth. My goal is to max my 401k every year, no matter what. And I'm talking max. I think at the time it was like 16,500 a year or something like that. Um, and I told myself, I was like, as long as I can do that, every year, like there's no way for you not to become a millionaire over the time, right? Like it's not going to be fast, but over X number of years, like it's just physically not possible to make a million dollars if you put, you know, 15 grand into the market every year. Um, and so that's really where it all started. At the time I had the additional bonus of working at a startup company and that company was like, look, we will match a hundred percent of whatever you put into your net worth up to the full max. Like it was crazy. And I looked around, I was like, oh my gosh, do all, do all of you maxing out your 401k? Like this is free money. And everyone's like, no, like I can't, I'm not gonna, like I don't care, I need my money, right? I wanna go out shopping or, or whatever. And I thought it was crazy. I was literally the only one for the first year to put, I think, yeah, let's say it was 16,000, they would give me 16,000. And so I automatically doubled my money and in investments and with the stock market, you know, being low and then all of a sudden climbing. Like over the time, it exponentially grew. Um, so there's definitely luck and timing in there. But it was crazy that out of all, like say, 15 people I worked with, you know, only two or three of us at the end before I left was maxing it out. Like they didn't realize it was double money for free, right? Even if you doubled it and then cashed out and paid all the taxes and fees, you still make a ton of money, yeah. right? But it required – it was the psychological – like there was, there was weeks or months where I would have like a paycheck of like $90, Right. And then I had to live off $90 for two weeks. Mm -hmm. Right. And so most people aren't, you know, that hardcore. They don't want to do that. And so, you know, there's, you know, ups and downs. Sure. Uh, but yeah, so, so maxing the 401k every year. 
And then I eventually added maxing um, a Roth IRA on top of it. So over the years, like on average, I'd put in at least $20,000 no matter what. And then anything else was extra if, if there was extra. Wow. Okay. So, and now you said as your uh, self-employed guy, you're doing the SEP IRA and that's, yeah. that's just, a, it's a, it's the same thing as a traditional IRA, but for self-employed people. Is that right? Yeah. And there's maxes, like it has to be a percentage of what you earn. There's pros and cons to it, right? Um, you know, I, I don't get the free matching 401k anymore, which is like the biggest thing that sucks, you know? Um, but you know, you get lots of other freedoms working for yourself. Um, but yeah, so, so right now I max out the SEP every year. I max out my Roth IRA every year. Um, and then, yeah, those literally like, those are the only two things I consciously try to do. Everything else is just extra. And some, I mean, there's, there was a period of three years when I had my second kid and my wife wasn't working. It was like I was providing like for my whole family on a blog income, which, which isn't a lot. I mean, it's fine. Um, but I was doing that. Um, and it, <laughs> for, I think three years straight, I think I lost like 80 or $90,000 in cash. Like I was losing money like yeah. every month and my net worth would show losing money. Um, you know, the stock market might hide it if it was going up, but if you looked at the cash reserves, Every month for like a few years, it kept going down, 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 down. Um, so, so there are, you know, and and that was a mixture of, you know, not trying, not pushing my blog to make money. It was having a better life. So, like, there was a lot of stuff that goes into it. But the point is, it's not always going up all the time, and you have to consciously decide, you know, how you're gonna spend or save your money. Sure. Um, depending on, again, like, you know, your goals. When did you make that transition to having your side hustle, your blog, saying, hey, I just want to do this as a as a way to, you know, um, help myself and help other people into finding a way that you can make money from your business, but then doing it in a way that you feel good. W at what point in your life did that happen? Yeah. So that I, I was blogging for about a year and a half, two years, and it got to a point where I was working like 80 hours a week. I'd work on the blog 40 hours. I'd work 40 hours. And my wife was like, dude, you are burning out. Like you need to pick one or the other. You know, and I was like, well, there's no way I cannot give up this blog because it's so much fun. I'm learning and growing. Right. Our net worth is growing. And so I was like, well, then it has to be the job. And, coincid and, and coincidentally and fortunately for me who hates making big decisions, like I walked in, I was like, all right, give your two weeks notice. Give your two weeks notice right around Christmas time. And they called me in the office and they said, guess what? You're fired. And I was like, are you serious? And I literally packed my stuff. I went to a friend who had an office and I just started working. And from that day, I was a full-time blogger. Wow. Um, so the decision was made for me. Um, and my wife was nervous, like, wow, you know, like give it a few months. And I said, all right, give me three months. If, if this doesn't go well, I'll look for another job, right? And it's been about eight or nine years. So, and I still haven't. Um, but yeah, so so that, that, that forced me to transition over. Um, and, and I, and even at the time, so then it went from making double money, right? Cause I had my four, I had my, my salary, I think it was about 60 or 70,000 from the job. And then I think I was making, let's say 40 or 50,000 blogging. Mm -hmm. And so that was, you know, I was a hundred something thousand dollars. Yeah. And then when I lost the salary, I was like, woohoo, self-employed blogger. I'm awesome. And I'm like, like I'm making like half now. And so that was a really weird thing too, because I had to get used to making like even, Right. Not saving anything. Yeah. And I remember writing a blog post thinking, like, is your dream job worth it if you're not saving any money anymore? Hmm. Right. So here I was the finance guy saving, banking, investing. And all of a sudden I had no money to do that as much. So then I had to say, well, how am I going to make more money? Hmm. Right. And so that to your question of monetizing blogs and there's a whole bunch. I mean, that's um, you might have covered this before on a show, but that's a whole other you know, how to make money blogging. Mm -hmm. And there's stuff that, you know, you can do like there's stuff I could do. I can probably make. 30 grand a month, but I can't do it because it's against my, what would I feel with stuff? Sure. Right. So I, so I do enough to provide for my family and stuff that I'm comfortable with. And then I call a day, you know, good lifestyle. That's good. You don't need to like hyperdrive it. So, so do you think over time that your, your big goal of becoming a millionaire has now transitioned to what is maybe my best life look like as opposed yes. to the millionaire goal? Yeah, the millionaire, like I still want to hit it just because it's a personal accomplishment. Right? I just want to say like, all right, I did it. I figured it out and I hit a million, right? Um, but it doesn't change my lifestyle at all. And and really my kids opened up my eyes that again, there was like, oh, wow, like there's more than working and hustling and making money. Um, and so like my goal now is to wake up and like I, I still like have the urge to create and write and work, right? But I don't want to like 
focus on it 100% of my life. Mm -hmm. You know, so my goal is to work, let's say, three hours a day and then just enjoy the rest of the day with kids, with hobbies, volunteering, whatever you want to do. So if I can get to that lifestyle, which I'm pretty close to, the money, you know, is great, but you don't, you know, you, you can, you have to figure out why you need the money, mm -hmm. right? Most people want money so they can stop working and do fun stuff, right? That's the whole point of money, to do whatever the hell you want to do. So if you're already doing whatever the hell you want to do, then you're good. And some people need millions, some people don't. It just depends on your lifestyle and, and, and what I guess you enjoy doing if it costs money or not. Oh, that's cool. So what, what are the things that you do feel good about uh, working on as a blogger, as opposed to the things you don't feel good about. I, you mentioned, hey, have you had other people on the show that talk about monetization? We had Michelle Schroeder Gardner on to talk about oh, affiliate cool. marketing. So we know a little bit about affiliate marketing, but what are the things that you feel good about, um, as opposed to not feeling good about about as a blogger? Yeah, and this is <laughs> hard to say without offending other bloggers or people. Um, well, I, you know, I mean, so I mean, without without having you know feeling like yeah. that. I mean, it's it's all personal, right? People want to right. go down a certain path. Some people feel good about promoting certain products, and others don't, and that and that's okay. Like it's it's all personal to you, and that, that's that's what I'm interested in. Yeah, yeah, no, totally. I think stuff that I use or love, like like even the Philly stuff, like companies I love, like USAA or Digits, apps and companies I love and use, I promote all day long for free. And if they and if I get paid, great, I'll I'll find a way to get paid for it. So that's like my number one. If I use this and I love it, I can promote it, right? Um, and so that's one. I think for me, so some people might know that I I started RockstarFinance.com and then I ran it for a few years. Um, and, and with that, like I tracked every financial blogger that was live that I could find for like three years straight. So every day I would read, I think the, the community itself pushed out 200 to 400 articles a day on money, which is a lot of articles every day. And I poured through them all and skimmed obviously most of them. Um, but I got to see trends and I got to see what people are doing. And because I started 10 years ago, I know what it was back then. And it was very community based, very like raw and real and over the years when people find out you can make money it shifted to i want to start a blog to make money and that was the number one goal they still want to help people which is fine and they still um you know they still talk and they still help and, and give tips and everything but the number one reason was for money and so the blogs are set up to make money hmm. right and i think that's the part for me that's really you know and, and because i would read 400 articles a day like I think one day I counted like 320 of them were all set up with the same template, how to make money, you know, and, and there's courses, here's how to make money blogging. And the number one thing in there is write a page on your site, how to make money blogging. So there's blogs, like I'd see them show up the very first blog post. Here's how to make money blogging. Here's all my affiliates. And I'm like, dude, you just started like yesterday. <laughs> right. And it's a circle. And so, you know, like I can go on this tangent a lot when I know the show isn't, isn't for that. Uh, the point is, like, figure out, like, if you're into, if, if you, like, if you want to make money, blogging is, like, r the law, it takes forever to make money. There's so many other ways you can make money faster than blogging. Blogging is great if you love it, if you're passionate, if you want to hold yourself accountable, if you love community, um, and you make money on the side, that is awesome, right? And you can tweak it. And so that's, so that's, for me, it's always been a hobby first, and I've done monetization that I'm comfortable and then I stopped doing the rest. Yeah. Um, and so because I've seen the community, the, the whole ecosystem over the years change, you know, I get a little feisty with it. Sure. Well, that's and that's where you can see that come through in your writing and you can see that come through in your personality that I think people trust you more because of your your ability to go with your heart. And I think that's good. Yeah. So um, I try, man. Thank yeah, you. Absolutely. So let, let's talk about fatherhood a little bit. So you got to yeah, let's, you... let's do something more positive. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you think that's positive. I love being a dad. So uh, uh, I heard you have your your you had your third child now. Is that yeah, right? Three boys, another little boy. So I'm wow. a six year old, a four year old and a two month old. That is incredible. So uh, do you you know, we were talking about net worth. I mean, do you think you'll teach your kids about net worth? Are you, t are you talking to your six year old already about what net worth is or, or conversations yeah. about money yet? No, we don't talk about net worth, but I do like, we talk about the value of money. And so like, I'm a big yard sale person. And of course, every time you take a kid to a yard sale, there's a million toys like, Oh, I want this toy. I want this. I want that. And fortunately things are super cheap there. Right. And so I, then they have their own piggy banks and they get money for, you know, you know, birthday presents and whatnot. And so every day we go to yard sales now, I say, hey, bring a couple dollars. 
and then you can figure out what you want to buy there and you can make decisions, right? This one costs $2, this one's 25 cents, but it lets them kind of understand what money does and how, and we will go to stores and they'll say, Oh, I want a guy. They call like all their little action figures guys, right? <laughs> so I want a guy, I want a guy and they bring a dollar, but like at CVS, a guy is like 20 bucks. You know, but like, but I got like three of them at the yard sale, you know, and so I'm trying to teach them how a dollar is a dollar, but it's different depending on where you shop, right? Um, so that's what we're focusing on. And anytime they try something new, like a vegetable or something they don't want to do, I have this box of coins that they can choose a coin uh, to, to pick from. So those are like the money things we're working on, but but no net worth or financial stuff. But But I do slip in entrepreneurial stuff and you know hey life doesn't have to be on this one road like it's open you could do whatever you want like i'm that kind of kind of person that's great so has your um has your wife worked at the same time while you've been making this journey personally how have you guys worked that out between mom and dad working yeah so she for the um i would say out of the last 10 years for the last eight of them um she was a stay-at-home mom for a while but throughout she's been working on getting a phd Hmm. um so she's been in school um, so most of the income has been coming from, you know, my blog and, and entrepreneur stuff. Um, and then she just went back to work about a year and a half ago, uh, which is great because that frees up like, oh, well, I don't have to make as much, right? I can adapt my lifestyle more. Um, so now we've kind of switched and I am now mostly stay at home dad. And there's a couple hours in the morning, um, where, where I just work for like two hours straight. Um, but yeah, but next month she'll go back to work and then I have all three kids in the morning getting them off, you know, watching part of them. So it's, it's interesting, you know, it's way different. Yeah. So I was talking to my wife about, uh, you being a stay at home dad today and she's like, oh, you have to ask him more about that. So like, what, what does your, (laughs) so once they start going to school in the fall, what, like, what does your day look like as stay at home dad? Yeah, I think, um, so yeah, it's new now with a baby. Um, but I think I'll be like, so I used to wake up like five in the morning and work for like two hours and then get the boys ready to go to school. But now because the baby is is a baby, (laughs) like I don't, I think I can only slip in work, um, after I get the kids off to school, like around eight 30, nine o'clock. So the morning is probably going to be waking up, you know, from a crying baby, you know, watching him, feeding him. Um, getting the other boys clothed and everything, getting off to work or off to school and then probably me slipping in work while the, while the baby naps, yeah. you know? Uh, and so my wife's going to go to work early in the morning and then come back early. Okay. Um, so, I'll, so right from the morning, I'm with the boys all the way till about three o'clock in the afternoon. And then in theory, I'll be able to work after that if I'm not completely exhausted. Absolutely. Right. But again, like the idea of work and blogging, right? Like I, I blog for a living, right? So it's work, but it's, you know, it's, yeah, it's fun. Fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so my goal is like I stopped working nights. I've stopped working weekends, at least up to this point. Um, and my goal, again, is just to like blog for a couple hours in the morning and then, you know, be able to say, hey, that's a day, mm-hmm. you know, like that. That's like my perfect lifestyle. So that's like call it like 10 hours a week or something like that, 10 to 15 yeah. hours a week of writing, having fun and then spending most of the time with your kids. And yeah. Fun. And I'll tell you, like I, when you hustle and this goes, I mean, people that are trying to save and invest and put down, there's, there's two ways, right? You earn more, you spend less. You can only spend less to a degree until you're not comfortable or you have less, you know, have nothing else to cut. Um, you can earn more. So a lot of people go earn more and they hustle and do night jobs and weekend jobs. And I think what I've realized because I've, I went through all that and I paid off the debt and I started saving and investing, it's nice to know that you can retract and not have to hustle. Right. And a lot of people, especially online and especially us financial bloggers, we're like, hustle, hustle, make money, make money and save, invest, retire at 25. Right. Like you're like, always go, go, go. <laughs> and we forget to stop and and, and try and enjoy, yeah. you know. And so um, for me, I said, you know, what? you're working every single day. You're working nights. I started I like just one day I was like, you know what? No more laptops on the weekends. And I'm now 10 months in a row. I have wow. not opened up a laptop on the weekend. Yes, I'm very happy. It's crazy because Monday I'm super anxious, right? Because like, what if the internet went down? What if like you missed something, right? But nothing horrible. I mean, I'm sure stuff does happen, obviously. But like the world doesn't like, revolve around you as much as like you think, right? right. <laughs> like people move on and live. Um, so anyways, for, so if you're a hustler out there or you're stressed, like I know like when I stopped working the weekends, Monday I was anxious, but I was super excited. So I'm more excited to work now because you have that break. You're refreshed. And it's just feel like, and I'm more efficient because I can think smarter, 
right? Because you're not working 24 hours a day. So anyway, well, a nugget for whatever that's worth. So you turn the, you turn the laptop off on the weekend, uh, yeah. be a stay at home, you know, to be a present father, you know, good yes, husband. Present. Are there other things that you do during the week just for the fathers out there uh, or the or the mothers out there? to not let uh, technology or work kind of grab a hold of you. I know your work is fun, but yeah. what are the things that you do during the week as a, as a, as, as a present parent to try to stay away from technology that, uh, that kind of help you to, to be that guy that you want to be? Yeah, well, I will say, um, and it's very tight technology is, you know, like with cell phones, we're so used to checking it and seeing alerts. And so like for, and, and I go in spurts, um, but for about a year straight, like my rule is I'm not allowed to look at my phone when a human is around me, you know, and that's if I'm at the department store, if I'm, or I'm a grocery store in the waiting line, if I'm in the car, like wherever I'm at, if there's someone around me, I can't look at it. Like that was a rule. And so with kids, it was great because they're always around you, right? Like it's when you're at home, obviously. Um, and so that helped me pay attention to them more and not be like, Oh, like I need to get, you know, I need to answer that question or I need to like, like that thing on Twitter or Facebook or whatever. Um, so, so that rule, if you can pull that rule off, that changes your whole life and relationships with everyone. And I remember like the one thing that happened after week is I'd see everyone else and everyone is on their cell phones. Right. And you don't realize it until you stop doing it yourself. Like it's crazy. You know, so like I challenge you to not look at your cell phone when another human or your kids are around. Just try for a week or try for a day and see how it affects you. And you will be annoyed at other people doing it. But like it starts sinking in and, and over time it, it really helps. Um, so that was one. Another thing I cut out, like I go on these challenges of, you know, not doing X, Y, Z for 30 days. Right. So like with money, it was like, don't go shopping for 30 days, you know, and see what happens. Right. That totally, you know, blew my mind open, um, you know. And this one that I tried was no uh, complaining for 30 days. Mm. Um, and the complaining is good too because kids especially catch on to that. And, and, you're, and everyone's always complaining about something. And that's why I'm off social media except for blogging because everyone's complaining all the time, yeah. right? Like it, it's, all, it's just all noise. And so I stopped doing that and I realized that the mood in the house gets better when you stop complaining, right? And you catch yourself after a while and, and, and then just like with the cell phones, you see everyone else complaining around you. You know, you're like, oh, why is everyone complaining all the time? Right. Like it's so so these little habits of of not doing something that's better for you or your family, like it, for me, at least, has really helped. And I make it a challenge because if it's a thing like I'm good at, like completing challenges. Right. And so and so maybe try that if you're someone that that have a hard time putting down technology or. Um, you know, always in your brain the whole time. Those are great. Those are great tips. I've uh, I read a book called Complaint Free World, and it's oh. it's that same sort of mentality uh, where you try you put this like wristband on for 21 days, and you have to go 21 days straight without complaining. And man, this <laughs> and when, originally when I read it, I'm like that shouldn't be that hard. And I think it's been two months now, and I like keep going back to day one over and over again. And I, I'm a fairly positive guy, right? I yeah, mean, right. You know, but but it's amazing how how much you complain, and then when you start yeah. to be aware of it, how you're like, wow, I do that more than I thought. So I'm 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 gonna take you up on that talent challenge, man. I'm gonna I'm gonna at least All get right, to my dude. 21 days here. So I like it, man. I like it. <laughs> yeah, I know you could do it. Well, cool. So uh, we talked a lot about net worth today. A lot of it, a little bit about fatherhood. So do you have a, do you have a book that you'd recommend um, that you read or or did an audio book of that helped you to grow your net worth and try to you know uh, um, get to the goals you're trying to get to? Yeah, I will say not not net worth specifically, mm -hmm. um, but I can tell you so something for me like I need to be entertained or have fun when I'm learning something. And so a book that really did that for me is Ramit Sethi's book. I will teach you to be rich. It's really feisty. It's kind of crude at times. Um, I know it offends some people, um, but it but it but it made me interested in learning and it gives you actionable items to do. And so that to me like really changed my mentality. And then, you know, coupling that with the millionaire next door, those kinds of books, like as once it's seeped in, you know, like everything else is kind of figuring it out on your own, what best works for you. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so financially, those are the two books that I always like to recommend. Um, but there was a book this last year I read called essentialism mm -hmm. by Greg McEwen. And that one was good, you know, cause we always, we have so much stuff, career, family, financial goals, like there's so many things in our lives. And that book, it tries to get you to stop doing the stuff that doesn't matter and focus on like the number one thing that does um, that like that that's going to give you 80 percent 
you know, working on one versus, you know, trying to be 100% perfect in all areas of your life. Um, and when I read it, reading that book, this kind of prompted me to stop working the weekends um, and focusing. And I was, you know, I was running Rockstar Finance, Budgets Are Sexy. I was consulting. I was doing all this stuff while trying to be, you know, at the time, half half a day stay at home dad. And that book really got me to like stop and and pay attention more, you know. Um, so, so essentialism is a newer one. I think it just came out a couple of years ago. Um, that one's a really good one to start with if you're bored of hearing all the other financial books everyone recommends. <laughs> <laughs> you can only hear so many debt-free stories, right, Ken? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It, it, it's and all this money stuff. It's all the same thing. Even blogging, when I write, I'm like. I say the same thing just in a different way every day, sure. right? And I actually, I picked up a book. Here's the book if you really want to go back. It's called Thrift. It's from like 1875 or something. Nice. But like you read it and the words are different, right? It's old, old language, old English. But like it's exact same thing, right? Like don't waste all your money at the bars. Like, you know, invest some of your gold coin. Well, you know, like it's all the same exact <laughs> stuff, just said differently. Yeah. So like this stuff has been around for thousands of years, obviously. But like it just and, and I think today it's harder because we have technology. We have we see what everyone else is doing and it's hard to like stop and be like, wait, like what the hell do I want and what what where do I want, you know, to be, you know, X numbers of years from now or even, even next month. Mm -hmm. You know, I think and, and for me, net worth, tracking it, paying attention like that was that's my barometer. Like I can just do that and I'll know if I'm doing well or if I'm slacking or whatever. It's really simple and easy. Um, you know, I was on a podcast the other month and I said something like, oh, like net worth is a new budgeting, right? Like my, my site's <laughs> called budgets are sexy, right? And so I'm a fan of budgets, but what I realized is that they're more helpful in the beginning when you don't know where all your money is, right? And, and you track every penny, you see what's going on, you figure it out, but then like you don't have to track every penny for the rest of your life in order to be financially successful, right? It'll help. Like you'll have more money for sure if you do that, but, but net worth is kind of like, a lazy man's budgeting, right? You, you track it all and, and, and it'll tell you everything you need to know. It won't go into the details, but you can see trends. And, and plus, if you're not doing anything at all right now, if you're not budgeting, if you're not paying attention to anything, right? Like it's super, it's, it's a super win, you know? So, and most Absolutely. people are just scared to try it because they might be negative and stuff, but the negative people, when you go up, it's a hell of a comeback, right? And you could show I was negative a hundred thousand. Now I'm up a hundred thousand, right? Like that is huge. That is is super, you know, awesome. So I love it, man. Well, so if you looked back in 2007 or 2008 when you were starting this net worth journey, and you could tell yourself one thing at that point, what would what would it be to 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 encourage yourself? You know, it would probably be um, that I don't need a lot of stuff to be happy. You know, like I always was like, oh, if I just had you know this car, if I just had this TV, like it was always. Like I needed one more thing and then I'd finally be happy. But what I realized is it just keeps, keeps going, you know, more and more. And then when you have a lot, you need more in order to like give you that thrill, mm -hmm. you know? And I think if I can go back and I'm big into minimalism in the last few years and, and that whole blogging community that's blossomed and, and early retirement, you know, fire stuff, all that stuff in a nutshell is like, Hey, you can be happy with less, right? Eat less money, less things. And I think back then, if I could do it all over, I just would have gotten rid of everything and tried to have the least amount of stuff possible, mentally, physically, you know, like that. Like, I think you go back to like even college days and stuff. Like, I was just as happy in college with like nothing, you know, as I am now. It's a different happiness and there's different responsibilities and rules and stuff. But you think about that and it was like, how could I be happy with like without eight hundred thousand dollars? Like, it doesn't make sense. Like that should make you exponentially happy. Right. But it doesn't. It helps, but it's different. Mm -hmm. And so I think going back, if I could have said less, less, you still be happy. Everything will be fine. I think that would have definitely escalated stuff faster for me. I love it. Well, that I mean, that that just encapsulates everything we talked about, too, today. I mean, you're you're trying to design the life that you want to have so you can be a present father and, des and design your actions in a way to be a present father and yeah. uh, really get the most out of life. I mean, I think you're going to you're going to raise these three kids with that mentality and they're going to grow up just with a just a really full life. I, I congratulate you, man. Thank you, man. I'm trying. I'm trying. I need to start reading dad bloggers. That's where I hear is, uh, all the good <laughs> tips are at. <sighs> well, very cool. So where could people find you and follow you and uh, and follow your yeah. your ways, my friend? 
Yeah, yeah. If you go to um, actually, if you go to jmoney.biz, it's just the letter J and M O N E Y dot B I Z. That kind of gives you a snapshot of you know my online resume and websites and stuff. Um, but the the current and only main project I have right now is budgetsaresexy.com, dot com, where I blog about money three days a week, um, and then Twitter at budgets are sexy. Um, you know, I hang out, I talk money, ask questions. If you know, if you want to ask advice, I'll do my best. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm here and I love community and. Um, you know, happy to help wherever, wherever I can. Well, Jay Money, thank you so much for your time today. This was a blast. Yeah, dude. Thank you so much, man. Good luck.